What's going on everybody? Teddy Baldassar here. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at a list of amazing affordable chronographs. So the term affordable is certainly subjective and when we're looking at chronographs, these watches tend to be a little bit more expensive than a lot of traditional timepieces. So I'm gonna be going through kind of a wide spectrum of kind of price ranges in this affordable range. Um, but some great mentions here, and I would love to hear comments down below of watches that I should consider to include in a part two of this series, or other ones that people should be aware of that they can see in the comments. So guys, let's jump into it. So first up, we have a brand that I have shown some love in the past. I've done a full review on one of their watches before, the Dan Henry 1970. If you wanna check that out, I'll link to it down below. But in this video, we're gonna be looking at two of their chronographs. The first one is the Dan Henry 1963. This watch comes in with a $230 price point with a case size of 42.5 millimeters, has a case height of 14.4 millimeters, and is powered by a Miyota 6S20 quartz movement. And the cool thing about this movement, it is a mecha quartz of movement. And if you're not familiar with that, basically it's a quartz movement that has that sweeping second hand type of look. So you almost have that automatic or mechanical timepiece type second hand with this aesthetic. And for the second Dan Henry watch, we have the Dan Henry 1939. Coming in with a price point of $220, comes in with a case size of 41 millimeters with a case height of 13.9 millimeters and is powered by a Miyota 6S21 quartz movement, another mecha quartz movement as well. So the next watch we have from a micro brand that I really enjoy, and that is Baltic. And we're gonna be looking at the Baltic Biocompax chronograph. These watches come in between $600 to $800, depending on where you're at uh, in the world. Case size, 38 millimeters. They're powered by a Siegel movement and are water resistant to 50 meters. They just recently released these Panda Dial chronographs. They're out of stock now because they had a limited of pieces that they actually created for them, but probably some of the best looking chronographs I've seen under $1,000. Really cool vintage looking aesthetic and wanted to mention them on this list today. Next up, we have a Seiko. It's the Seiko SSC081. This is coming in around a $300 price point, has a case size of 42 millimeters, is powered by a solar quartz movement, and is water resistant up to 100 meters. And now we're gonna be looking at a brand that I think makes some of the coolest vintage looking chronographs really around, Tissot. And the watch that we're gonna be looking at is a Tissot Heritage 1948. So I love Tissot's Heritage line, and this is one of the standouts for me in this range. This watch comes in just above $1,000 for its price point on the gray market. You can find it with a 39.5 millimeter case, has a case height of 11.9 millimeters, and is powered by an automatic ETA 2894-2. Next up, we have a watch from Russia, and it is a Strela Russian Chrono, the reference TR42LAM. So this watch comes in between $750 to $850, case size of 42 millimeters, and a case height of 14 millimeters. The movement is a modified Valjoux 7734, and for the price point, I think it's a pretty solid deal. A brand I don't see getting a lot of love, so I wanted to give them a mention here today. Next up, we have a very common player when we hear about affordable chronographs, and that is the Siegel 1963. So this watch gets a lot of love and hate. I think the price point absolutely puts it in consideration for today, and I'm a big fan of it as well. Not really my style, but still a great watch for the money. Coming in at $350, has a case size of 38 millimeters, is 13 millimeters thick, and is powered by, of course, a Seagull movement, an ST21. Next up, we have a Damasco, and this is gonna be the Damasco DC57. Price point between $1,800 and $2,000, has a case height of 13.8 millimeters, and a case size of 40 millimeters, and it is powered by a Valju 7750. Next up, we have Hamilton. We're gonna be looking at the Hamilton Khaki Navy Pioneer Automatic Chronograph. This watch really comes in between $1,500 and $1,900 on average. You can find it for cheaper than that, but that's where I really see these circulating at. Case size, 44 millimeters. Case height, 14.3 millimeters. And they're powered by a modified ETA 7750. Now we're looking at two watches from a brand that I really enjoy. One of them is a watch that I own. So let's start with that one first. And that is the Young Hands Max Bill Chronoscope. This watch retails between $1,500 and $1,800, but I will speak to you right now and tell you that 
you can find it for much cheaper than that. Case size for this watch is 40 millimeters. Case height is 14.4 millimeters, which is really a result of that beautiful domed crystal on the watch and is powered by an ETA 7750 movement. Now the other watch from Young Hands that I wanted to look at is the Meister Telemeter. This watch is a little bit more expensive than the Young Hands Max Bill. I see these retailing around $2,000 to $2,200. Case size 40.8 millimeters with a case height of 12.6 millimeters and is powered by an ETA 28922. Now another watch from Hamilton and it is more of a aviation inspired chronograph. And this is the Hamilton Khaki X-Wing. Coming in with a price point of $1,400 to $1,600 on average. Case size 44 millimeters with a case height of 15.5 millimeters. And is powered by a modified ETA 7750. Now we're gonna be looking at one of my favorite micro brands. And the watch that we're gonna be looking at specifically is the Autodromo Monoposto Chronograph Silver. So these were limited to 500 total pieces. There's still some out there. Price point is $1,800, case size 43 millimeters with a case height of 14.8 millimeters. And they're powered by a Seiko NE88 automatic column wheel chronograph and are water resistant up to 50 meters. So next up we have the Zin 103 ST. So I have owned a Zin in the past and I can just speak to the quality in the manufacturing of these pieces. And with the Zin 103, I see it being you know, pinned up against a lot of really expensive timepieces. And of course, this is not an inexpensive watch coming in with a $2,000 to $2,300 price point. However, I think the value that you're getting with a lot of pieces from Zen is really hard to match from even a lot of mainstream manufacturers. Case size for this watch is 41 millimeters, case height 15.5 millimeters, so pretty thick watch. Movement is a value 7750. And this watch comes in with a water resistance of 200 meters. Very typical Zen manufacturing, over manufacturing as many would say, but I don't think any of us are complaining. So I'm a big vintage watch fan and whenever I see a brand bring back an old design they had and kind of give it some contemporary flair, I'm always really eager to give it a look and then also put it into my videos. So this is exactly what I wanted to do with this watch and that is the Longines Heritage Chronograph. This watch is coming in between $2,000 and $2,800. I see these really spanning a lot of different uh, price points within that range. And then for case size, we're looking at 41 millimeters. Movement is powered by an ETA A07231 and is an automatic piece. I just love the vintage look at this watch and uh, really love what Long Jeans has been doing collectively as a brand, bringing back a lot of these heritage looking pieces. And then finally, we have the Omega Speedmaster Reduced. So I see these watches fluctuating in price a really good amount. So $2,000 to $3,000, I see them you know, really being seen anywhere in between. Uh, case size, we're looking at 39 millimeters with a case height of 12 millimeters. And these watches are powered by an ETA 2890A2. So guys, what do you think of this list? Where there's some watches that I should have included. I was trying to keep this under $2,500. That was kind of my first batch of watches I kind of wanted to present here with this video. Plan on doing a part two of a higher number, but what watches did I miss? What watches should be included in part two of this of chronographs at a little bit higher of a price point? We'd love to see comments down below. So guys, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon because that really helps out the channel. In addition to that, check out my Instagram. That's where you can stay up to date with watch giveaways that we're gonna be doing every month. I'm gonna be announcing our next watch giveaway very soon. So if you wanna keep in the loop about that, go ahead and follow me on there. And then finally, check out our Patreon. If you wanna support this new generation of watch lovers that we're really trying to just foster up here on this channel, join our community. All that support on Patreon would be really, really appreciated because it really helps this mission that I have here to just spread this love of watches that I have with as many people as possible. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.